It was our reason to get together and hang out <laughs> and, you know, just kind of put everything else aside, which if there is a metaphor to be taken from this series, it's that the, the actual milkshake is the excuse that they have to go out. Yeah, they, they, they make this... Yeah, the milkshake doesn't exist. They'll never find the milkshake. Or will, or will they? they? Please fund us on Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, a small goal of two point eight million dollars. I think we can do it together, guys. Yeah, I think we can do it. Yeah, it's all of us. You know, you'll share the profits of some posters and all that fun stuff. So yeah, so uh, their milkshake became our milkshake that we had, you know, every Thursday was the day that we'd get together to discuss. Well, what's hilarious? Yeah, hilariously, it took me months to realize. Oh, we're doing what our characters are doing. <laughs> Except instead of having crazy adventures, we're eating uh, really great food that Phil makes. <laughs> yeah, so he'll show me like, oh, so do you want some? Do you want some uh, tri-tip steak with uh, some fingerling potatoes? I guess. Sauteed and green onions. All right, well. Tomato confit. Sure, you won't stop me. So now the car is stopped. Uh, the car has failed on them, which. It's always fun to see something go wrong for these guys. Well, originally, it was going to be them pushing the car yeah. down Sunset or up Fairfax or across Santa Monica or whatever. I, I think that Phil had become... You, you felt that you were invincible, considering <laughs> that up to this point, we had not been arrested for stealing locations and holding up traffic. And you're like, we could probably push a car and no one would ever ask. <laughs> yeah, right. And then the actor, cooler heads prevailed. I think it was, I I honestly want to say it was me who said, you know what, let's just make sure we get Don't get arrested, yeah. Yeah. I love the introduction of the nth dimension here. The way that Ned delivers these lines here is very rhythmic and poetic. I like the way he delivers the nth dimension baby. Now you're sitting outside of the car with the black magic on your shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. And, well, it's... Keep going because it's... Okay, we're still rolling. So you're sitting out the car covering all this through the window, mm-hmm. and then we're about to have a pretty interesting moment where they get out of the car and you follow them out. Was this... When did you plan this? Or was this just a matter of saying, I want a lot of action, I want a lot of movement? No. Because I think a, I think a less interesting way to do it would be you're in the car in the back seat with them, Car door opens, cut to you outside of the car waiting for them. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I wanted to I wanted to continue the theme of scenes where there's a lot of cuts to scenes where we're not cutting at all. Yeah. I, I wanted to experiment with finding master shots in order to find the moments as opposed to constructing the moments. Because there's one thing when you're making something and you 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 break it down into a shot list, like shot one's gonna be this, shot two is gonna be this, shot three, shot sixteen, shot thirty-two. But when it's just shot one is going to be this, and it's going to cover the same amount of material that shot one through thirty-two was going to cover, mm-hmm. it becomes very challenging to figure out how you're going to block it out, how the action's going to take place, what is the what are the dynamic ebbs and flows, and I mean, look, I'm no master at any of this, but I. I wanted to experiment between cutting a lot. So we're so the prior scenes were in French over the shoulder. We're cutting back and forth. We see close-ups. We see externals. We see they're going down Lower Canyon. It's very dynamic, and the dynamics in this are different. The, the, the dynamics in a two shot are what can these two individuals convey with all their acting, and then can I cover it in a way that is acceptable? I guess that just that just covers them. They're the stars in this shot. I as a director, editor, and, or not the star, it's them. Yeah. I wanted to see them perform. I love watching actors perform, and I wanted to give them their moment. And so this was, it, you know, you see that in the, outside of uh, not Pavilions, uh, Palladium was yeah. episode five and six. You see that in, um, I, more or less in five, when they're sitting in uh, just that over the shoulder. I'm not cutting a lot. It's really just one or the other, because I can't really do a lot from that, from that angle, so I, that's that's why I decided to do this, which is to continue that motif of cutting a lot to letting them be the, the stars. So we're now we're continuing in order. Outside oh. of um, no, this is Santa Monica Boulevard again. No, this is Sunset. This is Sunset. Yeah, you see this in episode yeah, three. They've gone right. By, right right by this exact setup. And 
you know, this is actually uh, these are all this shot right here is an insert that I went back a, a few weeks later to get in order to bridge these scenes. That uh, the downfall of the same exact philosophy of just trying to capture it and letting it happen is that continuity is a shit. Um, and we, we tried to find the blocking, we found the blocking, we tried to repeat it, but it was all in the moment. And I, it's the downside of letting the actors control the moment and not being in total charge of it, which is fine. I don't, I don't mind it as long as there's some time to go back and fix things because it's very liberating.